A big hello and a very warm welcome to a special episode of Brand Equity with me, Sonali Krishna. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to delve into a subject that's close to many of your hearts. I'm talking about Bollywood, but we're going to be looking at it from a business standpoint. So, beat the 100 crore phenomena that's taken the entire industry by storm to actual evolution of business cinema. And looking at the past, present and where it's going to head in the future, digitization and what is brought to the table, its business impact and potential of the future, and last but not the least, creativity in Bollywood. You know, is it regressive or progressive? Many, many pertinent questions to be answered. And to do just that, I'm joined by a very elite panel, so let me not waste any more time. On my right, I have Amir Khan, we call him the thinking filmmaker, and the man who is going to be throwing a lot of light on all the questions we've just thrown up. Thank you so much for joining me, Amir. Seated next to him is Bollywood's ace producer, Ritesh Sadwani, the man who's credited with several hits, but most importantly, Dil Chata Hai, Zindagi Na Milegi Dabara, to name a few. Thank you so much, Ritesh, for joining me. And last but not the least, I'm joined by the founder and CEO of UFO Movie, Sanjay Gaikwad, the man who's credited for revolutionizing Bollywood in terms of digitization of cinema. Thank you so much for joining me, Sanjay. I'd like to start with you, Amir. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, a term that is, uh, you know, come to the fore very recently. It's called the 100 crore elitist club or the 100 crore phenomena. Firstly, if you could be kind enough to decode this term for me on what it means and what is the business impact when it comes to, uh, you know, a box office collections, to a producer, to a distributor, and how does it matter to the layman? Well, I suppose to the layman it doesn't really matter because for the layman it is uh, whether he or she has liked the film or not. As far as the business fraternity is concerned, the 100 crore club essentially means a film that has done a net business of more than 100 crores. Uh, so when, when all the money that's collected from a theatrical business of a film, when you look at the total, that's called the gross collection. From that you remove what is the entertainment tax and you're left with the net collections. The net collections is shared between the exhibitor, broadly speaking, between the exhibitor and the distributor and producer. So that's the net collection. So from the net collection, when you remove the, the, the theater rent or the theater hire, or the money that goes to the theaters, then you're left with the distributor share. So uh, the 100 crore club it typically means a film that has done a net business of more than 100 crores. Right, so this is the recent phenomena of, you know, films like Ek Tha Tiger, films like Dabang, I believe your film, which is Three Idiots, is now in the 200 crore club. So, I mean, uh, does it mean that just because you have a 100 crore box office collection, you're a profitable movie? Obviously not, right? No, certainly not, because the profit on a film will depend on how much you spent on it. Right. So, for me, it's never been the quantity of the business that, it, that you do, but a combination of what your cost of the film is and the quality of the of the success of the film. Uh, do you think it's impacting uh, the way uh, films will be made in the medium and long term? Because I mean, look at let's look at the films that have have, have actually crossed this uh, this mark: Ekta Tiger, Ravan, Singam, and many others. I mean, you, you're a filmmaker. Would you I, would you would you say that we are actually progressing in terms of content? and, uh, you know, in terms of uh, creative sensibilities? I don't think that, uh, well, I don't think that whether we're making progress in creative sensibilities is dependent on this 100 crore club phenomena. Don't you think it's No, it's not. I'll no, it's not. I'll tell you why. Because all along, success has always played a major role in, in the lives of the people involved with the films. So whether it's the 100 crore club today, mm. at some other time in, point in time, it, the figure would have been different because at that time films were doing a different kind of business. Today business has also changed. You have films releasing in, you know, three and a half thousand and four thousand screens. Sure. Earlier we used to have 300 screens, you know, being released at one time. Sure. Uh, at one time it was even less than that. So, what I'm trying to say is that at any given point of time, no matter which point of time you take, we have always wanted bigger and bigger successes. And at, at times they have, you know, uh, felt that they would like to go to any extent to make sure that they get that big success. And it's always been that there have been some people who are creatively driven to such an extent that to them this figure of 100 crores, 10 crores, 20 crores is meaningless. Mm. So right through, in fact if you ask me, in the 70s you had only a particular kind of film being made in mainstream cinema. Mm. And then you had the parallel cinema. Mm. 
in the 80s the parallel cinema you know took quite a beating hmm. and and it became more and more just mainstream and a very singular kind of film being made in the late 80s is when i feel the change started happening when newer and younger filmmakers came into the film industry and the kind of cinema began changing then hmm. and since the late 80s to now i think it has constantly progressed and changed and more dimensions have been added different kinds of films are being made and and this time in mainstream but there are a lot of young filmmakers who have come in as compared to the 70s and 80s in the mainstream i find a lot more variety of films being made khosla ka khosla this you know a lot of films have done well yeah. and uh, abhi kahani aayi thi which was a big success wiki donor wiki donor has done really well now these are all unusual films for mainstream cinema and they have done well in mainstream so my point of view is that irrespective of the 100 club or not there are a lot of films being made which are different which are unusual experiments are happening in mainstream cinema and that is good to see i i am aware that there will always be a certain section of the market which just wants to make the biggest and the most successful films no matter what that's going to remain right through so i mean essentially a 100 crore uh, mark could also be reached and now it's reached with almost every film i mean even a film like ravan has done 100 crores i mean you know which is quite astonishing so uh yeah you know which means that really digitization has played a great role yeah, in terms of reach sure reach it, it has so, played a significant role means before uh, ufo came into picture even a big movies like mai hu na sarfarosh uh, or virzara for that matter used to release with only 400 500 uh, prints yes. now means today ekta tigers movies like ekta tiger uh, jab tak hai jaan they are going into 2 and 1/2 3000 screens so there is a at least 7 to 8 times So uh, increase in the uh, number of I mean the, in the in the release center there is a significant increase uh, and the definition of success has changed uh, in recent time uh, means if you remember the film success used to be measured whether it has done silver jubilee golden jubilee or yeah. diamond jubilee now film business has become a one or two weeks business so what is happening is digital cinema has given a tremendous reach to the producer distributors and with a nice marketing campaign with nice promos you can bring the audiences to the theaters which can help achieve those 100 crores pretty quickly because of the mass distribution however the success is actually how long the film stays in the theater according to me three idiot is the one of the biggest uh, gross of success. success because if you really see in the first two weeks the three idiots total box office revenue is only 40 50% which means it stayed that long to generate 100% otherwise typically box office revenue is within first or two weeks is only 85 90% okay so that means 10 that means the films are not done well sure. if if the box office revenue is only first two weeks in the first two weeks that means it has not done well so movies like kahani as they mentioned long like donar they had a run, long run the even pictures. english english i believe english english is a very good example in fact what is happening is in the english english the number of theaters went up uh, as the week two. Uh, in week 2 week 3 so these are sign of the big successes not 100 crore this is the one of the advantage of digital cinema okay. is basically because you don't since if it was a analog print like if you had taken only 200 prints of english english you would have not been able to add another 100 if it was a if it was a hit film in digital cinema overnight you can add additional prints so there is no need for uh, no, delay. no delay in adding the more prints, uh, more prints. I want to ask one question to all three of you. Let's see what the answer is and how different they are. Let me start with you, Ritesh. How do you define a hit? It can't be that if a movie does hundred crore, it has to be a hit. So I think like a movie like Wicked Donor for me is a hit because it's made in a correct price. Everyone who puts money into it, it was always made for a limited audience. They never even thought so. For them, doing a business of fifty crores. is a big bonus and not only and we are forgetting it that is also done in overseas a big amount of uh, business so we right now these figures which you talk are only india mm. box office so i think you know if you call a film a hit everybody attached to the film in terms of uh, putting in money would have made money back it's for me that's a hit film what's a blockbuster then a blockbuster you make three times the money from the cost of the <laughs> film is what can be a blockbuster i think Okay. Okay. Uh, what's your answer? What's your answer? Sir? No, no. I'll go to him last. I <laughs> no, I want to take no, it last. I, <laughs> I want to take it last. What is your? My answer is not uh, how much uh, money you have made based on the investment. I will differ with uh, Ritesh here. 
because typically whatever is your investment depending on your marketing promos you can get the audiences and in the first week you can achieve that kind of revenues where you can make more money uh, in the first week itself and with the more and more wider you you go as amir said you will start crossing to 100 200 300 maybe reaching 500 crores also but that is not the sign of success my sign of success still remains those old uh, uh, silver jubilee diamond jubilee or golden jubilee but uh, here the definition instead of 25 weeks whether it is 3 weeks 4 weeks so that kind of thing will actually define and the measurement of that according to me is how much of the total it has co collected in the first two week if it is 50 60% i know that okay it is a hit that means it actually collected a more mm. revenues in the subsequent week that means people have liked it for me a film which some small films or a big film no matter what the film is whatever a film collects in its first weekend if it collects exactly that much in the rest of its run it's not a successful film okay it has to grow your thing if in the first weekend a film has collected 10 rupees and in the rest of the run it collects 10 rupees it's not done well is an unsuccessful film in, in in my opinion if the film has done 10 rupees in the first weekend mm. and does 20 more so twice that amount sure it is okay okay when a film does 3 4 times the amount of what it collects in the first weekend in its entire run then it's a successful film okay if it does 5 times which is what 3 dears has done then it is a smash hit it's a blockbuster blockbuster when it does 5 times the amount of its first weekend because then it tells you that the first weekend did 10 rupees but the rest of the run was 5 times that so it had length of run you know it it, it a lot of people loved the film word of mouth word happened. of mouth happened so now a small film will have different gross numbers a big film may have different gross numbers but this is a fairly good yardstick But uh, tell me, I mean, there is no industry benchmark, so each one decides what's a hit, what's a blockbuster, which is why there is so much <laughs> of odd reporting that goes on because nobody has any understanding, and there's no real benchmark. Don't you think that is a serious issue? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how it happens. I think the people in the trade know exactly what the business for film is. Now, what happens is in today's times of media, in today's times of promotions and marketing, uh, you know, there are. various ways and means in which you can publicize something which may not be true sure now when that happens you know you can put out fake figures you can put out you know figures and and some people report them also now uh, that is unfortunate but that is how it happens sometimes so films can be made to look successful where in fact they are not are you telling me that all these ads we see on the second day of a film releasing or on the third day saying that we have already collected so many crores we don't know if it's gross or it's net but you know we there are these ads i don't know how many of them are accurate number exactly. one exactly i don't know how many of them are accurate so obviously an ad is meant to give a good picture not not a not necessarily a, a real picture like like you're saying there was a time when actually people used to write 150 crores or 200 crores i've seen ads with 200 crores whereas when now the advertising is only a theatrical but they should link in satellite I mean, you price you can put in all kinds price, of things all ah. they should put in you can put all, in gross you can put, the, put in whatever so actually entertainment tax be a dal diya us honestly the studios and the producers more than the actors i would say actually is have spoiled the audience by advertising figures this this is a new phenomenon which brings me to my next question what kind of evolution of taste do you think the indian audience is going through do you think they are evolving i mean we can talk about filmmakers evolving mm. but why should filmmakers evolve if the indian audience is not evolving mm. and if you look at the number of uh, films that have done rather well mm -hmm. all essentially mass films mm -hmm. not to say that they are bad films at all i mean i'm nobody to say that basically do you think macho is back in vogue uh, what uh, phenomena which i have seen is uh, single screens were dying so the majority of revenue used to come from the multiplex only and you have a different kind of audiences for going to multiplex different kind yeah. of audiences going to single screen so pre digitization means i would say that most of the films were being made for the multiplex audiences yeah. but now the single screen and the even box office contribution used to be significantly higher coming out of the multiplex so yeah. obviously the content was focused uh, towards the multiplex audiences but mm. recently if you see there are lot of mass uh, mass appeal films. appeal films are coming because single screen are significantly contributing back to the industry and you are able to reach them because Absolutely. of uf because of this uh, digital, digital cinema this thing. and that is where now we feel that 
there will be mass I feel like action and all that thing will start coming back into that. Is India the lowest number of screens per thousand people? Is that actually yeah, yeah. India is highly under screen. We have only uh, I would say six, seven screens per million population as against 117 in US. And we are we are we are the largest movie going audiences. And there is a actually a myth that multiplex per screen revenue. Means if you compare multiplex per screen revenue, if you are saying that okay per screen revenue in multiplex is significantly higher, but abs means there is a myth. Single screen revenue is higher than multiplex per screen revenue. Is that so? That is that is the fact of the matter. I want to talk about uh, you know how important marketing of a film promos etc are for let's say this three day window that has become very key to a film so if you can throw some light on how uh, how important it is and how much of your total cost total budget do you allocate to marketing there is a ratio which i mean works but i think it depends on a film on, a, on some films you'll go into 15% on some films it's even 40% depending yeah. like you make a film of a 10 crore budget you're spending almost 6 to 7 crores in its marketing it depends on how wide you want to go, what the content is. The most important thing which converts tickets is ultimately the content. It's your promo which is going to, you know, do all the marketing for it. Like, I think almost 70 to 80 percent of a job of marketing is done by the promo of that film. Uh, the promo of the film. The promo okay. of the film. Okay. Trailer. That's what, the, tra the trailer. Yeah, yeah, the trailer. Yeah. You know, so so that's what is going to excite the audience and whether they want to come and watch it. So I think like an urgency to go and watch the film in the week of its release or to bring into that three day yeah. you know weekend to get in that large weekend and get in an audience it it i think the promo drives it to the i mean to the biggest thing you may spend as much money as you want but if your promo doesn't connect you won't fill up i mean those the, those three days okay so, so essentially you're saying i can make a really bad film but really bring out a really good promo and i can still make some money <laughs> occasionally that happens <laughs> Occasionally that happens. But I think primarily we've noticed it over these last few years since when we started going so aggressive with marketing. You know, that the at the end of the day it's the promo which does 80% of the job according to me. I have one question for you and just as a pure producer because Amir is producer-actor. So, do you think Indian actors are overpaid? Do you think Indian actors are overpaid? Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are. <laughs> Don't you think, I mean, I've been told, uh, you know, speaking to several industry people, that I believe that Indian actors are paid more than, than Hollywood actors. Some of them are overpaid and some of them also underpaid. So, you have that as well. No, you give very uh, safe answers. But, yeah, yeah. but I feel that. Yeah. No, it's a very safe No, no but it is. Some of them are stand. underpaid. I mean it. I, like, I feel there are, besides actors, there are a lot of people. Like, I think our writers are underpaid. How have we come to the situation? Thanks to your 100 crore club. Because of oh that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's that hundred crore club which has made people start investing more, saying, "Okay, this person gives a hundred crore hit. Let's go and sign him for this film." And then when that film releases, it does twenty crores. Exactly. So yes, they are overpaid. Yes. If I've gone to an actor for a film, which I have, and it's happened to me twice, where the actor has agreed to do the film, and I'm telling you that he has agreed to do the film, but he has asked me for a price which I thought does not work for the budget, not anything to do with. I can't name the person. It does not work. You know, I asked this question to you uh, about why actors are overpaid is because I believe that your budget is inflated. Yeah, it goes okay, up. Because of actor costs being so high, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I asked the question. So, uh, do you think uh, today, because actor fees are so high and a producer who's investing in an actor says, Ki main itna pay kar rahun, so let me milk everything and so hence the film is less about the script and more about the actor centrally themed and which is why our cinema is suffering. As far as I'm concerned, I don't charge anything off a film. I tell my producer that you don't pay me anything. Let, 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 let us make the film and you spend the cost of the film of making it. And once the film is made, I take a share in the profits of the film. If the film is good and makes more money, I will also make more money. If the film is not good and it doesn't do well, I learn less. So I will earn as much as I deserve to. What, in your opinion, do you see as the bottlenecks and challenges for what Hollywood? the challenges that we face? I think one of the biggest things that I feel that is that we don't do enough of research and development. We should be path breakers in, in, in different ways, in cinema, in for, for the world. That we are not doing. The other thing I think... Uh, uh, I strongly feel this is that we really need to value our writers more because when we do that only then will there will be a significant jump and change in the quality of writing in our films. Maybe writers should also be given a writer's share so you don't take any money. 
well i i i try and make it a point that we do that and yeah. we are doing that even in 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 Talash. Talash. oh so you have a writer so, share so you don't take any free depends on the on the success of the film yes that is oh, correct awesome that is correct i have a very interesting question to ask do you, if you compare uh, indian actors to uh, hollywood actors so they're big in their land you all are big in your land do you think indian actors are can can be bought for any money because they don't they will just do anything for money simply because the example i'm giving you is endorsements you see the number of actors are doing endorsements at a particular fee of course that must be their asking rate so it's fine people as long as you're getting it it's fine but they don't look at their personal brand value at all so you will see the same actor you know five times in a span of let's say an hour and a half and you're watching the tube uh, and this is actually unheard of in the west it's a very indian phenomena people don't do underwear ads people don't do uh, you know gutka and people just don't do it i mean they don't do ads per se so i mean why is this uh, such an obsession here are indian actors not brand conscious or is the indian public so star crazy that it's fine as far as i'm concerned i'm i'm very concerned about the kind of work i do so whether it's an ad whether it's a film whether it's a television show whatever i'm doing i'm very concerned about what i'm unless i'm happy about doing something i don't do it so i don't do a lot of ads no in I'm fact a, right now i'm not doing any ad uh, mr gaikwad you have a point of view see means if you compare with hollywood uh, means uh, according to me overall bollywood is going in hollywood way yeah. because of the talents and all that thing sure. overall overall it is sure. going in that manner but uh, you are right uh, in terms of uh, the kind of brand endorsement which they are doing so they are not selective it can be anything it, it can be are. brand endorsements it can Or be tv shows it can not be not public TV appearances shows, even the kind of movies they yeah. select let me talk about uh, talash we have always uh, you know expected path breaking cinema from you uh, and uh, if you can throw some light on how this film is different from your the rest of your films and the motivation for you to create this film i don't think i've ever done a suspense drama before so this is quite different from the earlier films i've done I don't know that can be called path breaking that we'll get to know when it releases and you know I I'm not very sure and that's not why we made the film also I'm just reacting emotionally to a story and if it moves me if it touches me I want to be part of it and similarly for Talash when I heard the script I just loved it so it's not only a suspense drama it's also it's a layered film so while it is a suspense drama at its core it's a film about coming to terms with loss and that's a very emotional aspect of our lives each one of us has people close to him or her and we are scared to lose those people which is an extremely important aspect of our lives i think reema has done a wonderful job of translating onto screen what she and zoya wrote together so we are all really happy with the film and waiting to see, see how people react to it it is an unusual film for mainstream how much was the cost of the film was it about 35 40 crores yeah in that range this yeah. is without the pn so if you have to give me the overall i mean how much are you expecting i've not said and thought about it like i'm saying right now i mean The dish really I'm, lies with a straight face. No, seriously, <laughs> I was thought about it. <laughs> no, seriously. Every I mean, night he takes a pen and paper and sits and calculates no, how much no. money he's going to make. No, no. I don't think uh, we'll lose money on the film. That's not possible. Like I've said, it's um, made in, uh, like it's made in a very uh, decent budget. So, like I'm saying, like you're saying, it's between 35 to 40 crores. It's exactly that. And it's not that I'm lying that I don't have the budget. But what we are expecting out of it, I don't know. I, I don't want to go with that. I'm against these numbers. I'll never advertise a number. If this movie does 200 crores. I will not advertise it unless Amir wants to or Farhan wants to. What is your release strategy? Uh, we are going wide, but we are going what the demand is. So I think we are looking at about a two thousand two hundred, two thousand three hundred screen. I have one question for both of you regarding Mr. Sanjay Gaikwad. Mm -hmm. He is UFO movies does digitization of uh, screens. Right. Uh, you know he handles eighty percent of 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 Indian screens. Right. Isn't that putting him in a putting everybody else in a rather dangerous position because today he is almost a monopoly. Very dangerous. If he acquires that one small player left, I mean it's all over. <laughs> He's very he dangerous. Comes the most powerful man. He decides yeah. to go on a maintenance break. That's it. There are yeah. no releases left. What UFO has done is 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 quite an amazing thing. The yeah. kind of sure. no work doubt. that they have done, no doubt. and the kind of uh, input that they have put into digitizing cinemas and bringing films to you know, and that that will only help in increasing the number of screens. As far as monopolies are concerned, I think anyone. any sensible person would be little nervous about a situation where anyone is in a monopoly. in a position of monopoly whether even if it's me so that is not ever a healthy situation and if even if it is a healthy situation that healthy situation remains only for a short period of time so we can only hope that mr gaikwad who is in an extremely <laughs> powerful position and we pray he gets more and more 
successful as as time goes by <laughs> remains you know uh, someone who is Uh, positive yeah, and has yeah, a positive yeah, approach to the yeah, business. We are about monopoly <laughs> situation. We are actually not a monopoly. There is a duopoly in the market, and we like to be in that competitive nature. Obviously, when you go to the monopolistic situation, there are regulations in this country, like competition commission and all that thing, which will not allow. Uh, mm. uh, we going into that position anyway. All the very best for Talash. I'm sure Thank it will you. be a path breaker. Where, uh, and we hope that you know the Indian cinema has one more iconic film to talk Thank about. You. Thank besides you. which club it gets into 100 crores or 200 crores. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I'd like to bring the curtains down on the special episode of Brand Equity. We hope you enjoyed the show. Do take the time and drop us a line at Brand Equity at etnow.tv or alternatively text us at five double eight double eight with your feedback. Also log on to our Facebook page that's facebook.com/brandequity to start a conversation with us or to dip into our archives. You could do the same on Twitter at brandequitylive. I'll see you next week same time same place until then. Ciao ciao.